You are now listening to The I. Walter Show. Real talk about nothing. Everybody ready? Here it is. Wow. This is awesome. Goodbye, self-service. Hello, service. service. <laughs> this place is going to be great for us. Yeah, free boner pills. Let's get this party started. Yeah. yeah. Ready? Yeah. Come on, guys, stop jerking around. Samamish's victim of freak OTP handjob accident? When her handjob hand slips, causing it to strike her own face and tumble out of a window to her death. Ah! Ah! She's got a jerk on! No, 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 no! 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 We need to split up. This thing only has two hands. What about its mouth? Something tells me she's not going to use that. She will use lotion! She wants us to suffer! She wants us to suffer! Need a hand? In life, sometimes things are far worse than death. Handjobs. Handjobs. Normally, when someone receives one, they just hate it. But in this place, they die on the inside. And it's all her fault. There's something evil in this place. With calloused hands and strong wrists, and solely one thing is certain. She's the only one who comes in this cabin, and she comes for you. Than a speeding bullet, more powerful than a locomotive, able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird brain, it's a plane, it's I, Walter. I, Walter. Yes, it's I, Walter, strange visitor from another planet who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. I, Walter, who can change the course of mighty rivers, bend ears with his annoying voice, and who disguised as Walter Interanti, mild-mannered janitor for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth, nonsense, and the American way. And now, another exciting episode in the adventures of I, Walter. Hey, good evening, everyone. This is Walter and I, Walter. I'm actually doing my show, I guess, normal time. It is now Thursday at 1.20 a.m. on October 8th. Um, I actually left, unfortunately, work early tonight because I had a little bit of an issue. Um, I don't know if I want to go into too much detail, but um, basically they've been just trying to get people uh, you know, written up and fired from my job. And I was the culprit tonight because I slipped and fell. And I wasn't the only one. Actually, I'm the second person who had slipped and fell. And they just try to find reasons to blame you for hurting yourselves, which I never even heard of before. So they were trying to find every reason why um, at my job I had fallen. Um, I'm basically, again, I mentioned this in other shows, I'm a glorified janitor. So they try to find a reason. Um, so you're mopping floors and you're cleaning, but they figure out a way. They don't want to hear what you're telling them. They just want to hear a way they can 
uh, you know, they say they're not doing it, to twist your words and say it's your fault and get you written up and eventually uh, uh, get you fired. So um, that being said, I just had it like a stress attack and I end up leaving um, and uh, leaving work early and going to the hospital to get checked out and then basically sent home. Um, not a very pleasant thing to have happen to anyone, but that's what did happen to me. And now I just got to figure out what's going to be going on with my job. Anyway, that uh, sorry for that long intro because that was almost a three-minute intro tonight. I've been doing that lately, I guess, more so. But it was kind of funny. Not really funny, but I liked it better than that stupid Jaws when I put up. And it was um, a parody. Uh, it was uh, basically, I guess, things like Cabin in the Woods and... Um, well, not Cabin in the Woods. Well, I'm thinking of Cabin Fever. And um, what was the other one? Uh, you know, kind of parody and, you know, making fun of those kind of movies and like Evil Dead. It was called Hand Job Cabin, and it's an official HD trailer feat. Owen Benjamin, written by uh, Bennett Silverman. It, it actually was pretty funny. Um, I'll, you know, hey, I appreciate the originality of that one. It was it was really good. It was really funny. Um, I've been experimenting with this new, uh, my other mic. I did order those mics I mentioned on yesterday's show. I bought the whole kit for two mics, two microphones, and um, actually the amp. I think it was about um, probably $111 free shipping on eBay. It was the only one they had that was at that price for the amp. And then it was uh, about $60 a pop for the microphones and everything else. So it was a little over $200. And I had some uh, discounts here and there for both eBay and Amazon, which I obviously use, and I saved about 30 bucks on those. Um, so because of what happened at work tonight, I really never got started, and um, it was just arguing with the bosses. Um, them, you know, basically – Belittle and reprimanded me and trying to make me look bad and was like, this is enough. I was ready to walk out um, after the first few hours of this bullshit I took up, had taken up with tonight. But I held in there as long as I could, and I finally just had to, like, you know, call it quits. Hopefully not literally, but yeah. Um, anyway, hey, I didn't realize this. I actually found out about this hand job trailer from iHorror. So um, I did put it on my Facebook page, um, the video. Uh, again, it's like three minutes. It's just a hilarious fake trailer, hand job cabin, beats off the hump day blues. That was pretty, uh, pretty clever with the words. Uh, fake horror movie trailers are sometimes more fun than actual horror movies, with the notable ones like Eli Ross' Thanksgiving and recent uh, Jaws 19, which obviously I said I did not like, standing out as prime examples of Flux Trailer Perfection. Um, we've gotten a new one for you just today, and it's likely to leave you begging for a feature. Actually, this one it would be pretty funny. I think the parody might be as far as it would go. Written and directed by Benj uh, Bennett Silverman, the nearly three-minute long trailer for a fake horror movie called Handjob Cabin, over half a million views in the past 24 hours alone, making it one of the most instantly popular flux trailers of all times, and it's not um, hard to see why, no puns in intended. They did a really good job. I don't, I don't think it was hilarious, but I think it was really well put together as a parody. Um, I definitely give them, these guys a lot of credit for what they put into it. Um, in an official selection at the Fiction Handjob Film Festival, Handjob Cabin centers on a group of friends who head out to a cabin in the woods, no puns intended, but that's what it says, to do a little party. And it's typical horror movie setup. It's uh, until they find themselves targeted by a malevolent, malevolent Entity with an uh, affinity for, well, hand jobs. That's what it says. If it sounds like it's up your alley, aka your sense of humor, um, is as immature as mine, that's what they said. Yes, yeah, so I'm in that boat too. You're going to get a real kick out of this one. Check out the absolutely ridiculous 
and utterly brilliant hand job cabin uh, trailer below. And it, it was good. Hey, I, I give again, I can't say enough. It was funny. I needed that after this horrible day I had of being in the hospital for a little bit and stuff. Um, so, um, I'm going to finish up with that note. It was funny. Um, well, it wasn't funny, but when I was in the hospital, I brought my stuff to go home with because I knew this was going to happen, that they're going to send me home, which they did, um, at least for today. And um, that being said, I actually um, – w- I you know, had my laptop in my backpack. So I pulled that out while I was in um, the emergency room at um, up in Lansdale in the hospital. And I was looking. It was like, wait a minute. I got an email that Miley Cyrus – I thought they said they were going to do that. She's going to be actually back again. I think it's the second time this year. Maybe it was already a year from um, the last time. I thought it was this year that I saw Miley Cyrus was supposed to, and I did not because I just figured, you know what, for the money I paid for that ticket, it's just not even worth it because she's ridiculous. Well, now she's coming back again to Philly, if I'm correct, if it is the second time, this time to Electric Factory. Other time it was Wells Fargo. She's actually stooping down, um, you know, her – obviously she's not as popular as – she was when she was a kid, um, and her tickets used to go. I swear, I remember even Howard Stern buying tickets for his kids and stuff. If I remember that correctly, I thought I I thought I am on um, all correct on this, but I remember them him saying and other people saying, yeah, they would try to get tickets for their kids, but they were like a grand or twelve hundred dollars. Well, now her tickets are like going at the electric factory. They only went on sale like two days ago. I didn't even know that. No, one day ago. I'm really wrong. They actually went on sale yesterday. And I found I got wind of it last night because it was like I just said, keep me tabs, you know, you know, keep me posted if she goes and, you know, tours in Philly, which she never rarely did. Years ago when she was real popular, she didn't go that far. She stayed in New York on the East Coast. She didn't have to go any further. Well, this is twice in one year she's been in Philly, um, Wells Fargo, now Electric Factory, which is a step down. You might as well play at the track at Darrow. It's general admission. It's a floor, you know, open floor for Miley Cyrus, um, and the tickets started at $70, which is unheard of because, again, her tickets started at, like, no less than $300, and then they went up from there years ago. They went up way high. Now she can barely get 70 bucks for a ticket, so that's saying something. And it was on a Saturday. It's on November 5th, or December 5th, I apologize. And I figured, you know what, December 5th, I'm already off that day. Um, I don't have to take off from work. I'm going to have all my time used up anyhow. And I wouldn't mind trying just to see her for the, you know, just to say I, I saw Miley Cyrus. And the fact that the tickets now have plummeted, she can't sell tickets if her life depended on it. It's like, maybe I will do it. You know, I love taking pictures. If I can do it there, I will. Um, so far, I've taken every celebrity this year in the last past couple years. But this year I really got was my prize winning year for getting a lot of good pictures of different celebrities. Um, It's still not the Miley Cyrus I like, but I'll deal with it at that cheaper price. So I did get, um, I actually did get a ticket just tonight for that. Yeah. I'm just putting myself in the debt. So I'm already there. I'm, I'm like on the brink of losing my job. It's like, what else could go wrong? I need something. Um, and I enjoyed, uh, I remember talking about this the last two shows, but I really did enjoy seeing Madonna. Um, you know, it's not fantastic, but it was definitely something that I really had a blast doing, taking pictures of Madonna. Um, and Miley Cyrus, I always really enjoyed her. She was like my favorite entertainer for years. Um, I enjoyed her movies. I really got a laugh out of her when she was a kid. And um, it's not my cup of tea again, but the price was just like it's something I'm not going to fight with. So I'll do it. Um, I wouldn't mind meeting her again. She seems like a good sport. It's just that whole I, I'm still hoping for the day she's just going to like say, you know what, this is enough, enough nonsense. I'm going to stop doing the drugs and acting like a goofball and basically walking around, uh, you know, basically with no clothes on and wise up because there's some other celebrities they got it out of her system i'm i'm hoping she will eventually too 
she's a good person. It's just she's just went down the wrong track for a while. I'm just praying it won't last. Anyway, um, there was a couple articles that were I have to get my political stuff in. I did not yesterday. And one is from Overpass for America dot com and they're both i got two articles in a row the one that caught my eye was one on trump and i really do this was on thursday october 8th it's dated no it actually went up october 5th today's dates to 8th so i was like wow this is something right on time for change um trump would deport obama's fake refugees if elected president uh, video at present video uh, number z- zero four a uh, hashtag news hashtag Obama hashtag Syria um, for Americans overpass news desk October fifth twenty fifteen overpass for America via Fox News now I really you know I respect a man for that people have differences of opinions but I think even the people who dislike Trump at this point are actually more interested in him than anybody else. He promises, and this I would believe, I'm not thinking he's going to bullshit people in this. He has enough money. He doesn't really care. He's like 70 years old. What does he have, or 69 or whatever? He's somewhere up there. He doesn't give a shit. He's not worried about the money. He just wants to get our country back on the right track. So I have no problem with that. He was on Hannity, it looks like. Because there's a picture of Hannity and Trump, and it says, On Hannity tonight, that was back on the 5th, Donald Trump stood by his statement that as president, he would ship out all the Syrian refugees who are brought into America. And this is really good because this other article I read would be a good follow-up from the same web source. Um, Trump pointed out that the U.S. already has too many problems, including multi-trillion dollar deficit. I mean, he's absolutely right. Um, there's a caption on a picture that says, men don't abandon their women and children in a time of war. Jihadists posing as refugees would. So this article, again, was on Overpass for America. And I respect him for this. I mean, if he really does get these Syrians out of our country, these illegal immigrants, um, I think, honestly, I really think he's not just saying that. I think he will, you know, keep his word. Um, I mean, I'm going on the trust value that he's kind of almost going on the same page. I mean, a friend will disagree with this, and that's fine. But I think he's on the same page as Reagan was. And anybody who is on that page of they're not going to just say stuff. They're going to actually physically do it. I think if personally, if Trump did get um, elected as president, you know, president, I think he would probably not waste any time and just basically start doing the job. So um, we need somebody like that. The other one actually from Overpass for America was from – it was titled England in Europe Union – European Union. Never in a thousand years will we agree to open borders. Hashtag 04A, hashtag news, hashtag England, hashtag immigration. Um, this was Mr. America Overpass's news desk, October 6th. So this is the day afterward. Words. London AP, Britain will never in a thousand years agree to common European immigration policies to, uh, to deal with the surge in number of refugees fleeing to the continent, a top government official declared Tuesday. So that's really good to hear. In fact, that's very promising. I mean, Europe's getting tired of this crap, too. That was actually on the bullet point. Home Security, Theresa May, the UK's interior Interior minister, told an audience at the Conservative Party conference that Britain should tighten control on its borders, admitting to vulnerable, uh, uh, vulnerable refugees, but keeping out those... Oh, wait. Yeah, it says vulnerable. I can't say that word. I know how to say it. I mean, it's in my mind. I can say it. I just can't say it. But I think you might get what I'm trying to uh, say. Refugees, by keeping out those who simply want to uh, want a better life. Um, she said other European countries should also toughen up their border controls, arguing that 
in the last few years, more people have applied for um, asylum in the EU from uh, Balk, uh, Balk, Balkan countries. Yeah, I'm not sure what that's supposed to um, state or how it's supposed to be pronounced. So I apologize. Which have not seen war for years. Um, then from war ton Sir- torn Syria, she said that European uh, immigration crisis can only be resolved by nation nation states uh, taking responsibility themselves and protecting their own national borders. So I agree with that. Yeah, this was again both of those articles um, on overpass, by the way, and that that's a very good you know. That these were very good articles. They're very short, um, you know, but it, I'll find a way to kind of destroy them. Obviously, so yeah, that that's my political news. I again did not listen to um, Rush, so I apologize about that. Um, that that's again that's the harsher news. This is pretty funny, um, this thing I saw. I was going to actually read something from bloodydisgusting.com. That seemed to work well yesterday. I did a lot of horror segments. I actually, I don't know if I post anything, but they actually had a video and a story on uh, the John De- uh, the John DeLorean from Back to the Future. That thing was falling apart, and true diehard fans actually had taken the time. Um, I guess that's universal allow them to have the car to restore it to, you know, what it looked like and actually better than it looked like in the movies um, of Back to the Future because some of that stuff was just simply props on the car of the DeLorean for the Back to the Future time machine. Now they wanted to get them to work, like really work, not just be, you know, pretty lights just blinking. They wanted these lights to actually have, well, they're not going to function, but they were more functional than they were in the film, if that makes any sense. Anyway, they have this thing, because I thought these movies were horrible, but these Tremors movies, there's it looks like Tremors 5 Bloodline, own it on Blu-ray and DVD, HD, buy it now, Michael Gross and Jamie Kennedy. Now, that's kind of weird. He actually looks good there. I didn't realize that was Jamie Kennedy and this uh, thing trying to, uh, trying to get you to buy uh, Tremors 5. But Jamie Kennedy was very funny back in the day when he was on NTV, and he actually was from Philadelphia. That's the only thing I, that was kind of weird to see his name. Um, anyway, the reason I had this article, not because of this thing about Tremors 5, but it was the 10 most unique horror movies of all times, and they're showing – the new uh, reboot of Halloween when Jason takes these virtue. I think that was a new one. Actually, maybe it was a different one, but it was definitely one of the Friday the 13th when Jason basically picks up these people in the sleeping bags and he basically s- smashes them against the trees. I think actually that one, um, now that I look at it, I forgot, that's the one when Jason X, I think it was, when Jason was in... Um, outer space and they made a virtual um, camp crystal lake to try to corner him that's the one i think it was because i i know i can just see it's just a frame but i know that's what they're in uh what that frame is from from this film because it doesn't actually say that but see i know all the friday the 13th movies inside and out um that's one thing you can't pull uh pull the wool over my eyes so to speak Let's see. Uh, yeah, actually, it does. Tell you. I didn't go down far enough. Let's see how close I was from telling the truth. It says, Prophecy, Sleeping Bag Death. The death of a sleeping bag scene in Friday the 13th, Part 7. Oh, it's Part 7 now. See, I thought it was Jason X, because he did do that in Jason X, too. Uh, Friday the 13th, Part 7 is not entirely unique. It takes cues from the scene... In the 1979 Echo Horror movie Prophecy, Sleep and Bag Death. Oh, I forgot about that. But see, um, the shot they show is actually Jason because he has the hockey mask on. But they're saying they got this idea, which I do own that movie because I remember being a kid and I, I always wanted to go see it because it was in, um, 
I think it was in the magazine Time. They did an article in this movie Prophecy. It was it was interesting. It got really bad reviews, this movie Prophecy. What it was about was basically, um, I don't know how else to put it, but I guess the different semen, whatever you want to call it, the the um, um like the different um uh goo from different animals got uh mutated in um basically toxic some well not toxic waste but it was one of those political movies so the movie is kind of it's not really an excellent movie, but it's one of those political movies where they're saying, see, if you dump all this, this toxicity into nature, nature's going to find a way to fight back. That was the whole thing about prophecy. That's why it was called that. So they show this part, and I totally forgot about in prophecy, where this creature kills uh, this family that was on um, a hiking trip by like um one of the people they actually the person was in a sleeping bag and he this animal grabs i'll explain the animal in a minute and smashes the person against um against a tree i totally forgot about that but yeah prophecy looked like an oversized um black bear i guess you call them you know because they're pretty vicious i think or the black bears i think they call them um, they're not, well, there is, there was a movie called Grizzly. Maybe Grizzlies are the, the worst. Maybe it's not called a black, I think there is a black bear. Let me see. Yeah, there is such a thing as called a black bear, but I think how dangerous are black bears in North America? Um, cause I thought they always said black bears are very dangerous. Like there's certain animals you you know species of an animal that is worse than others i guess so to speak but um yeah but there is there was a movie called uh, grizzly as well and um that was you know same premise but it almost was on the premise like probably most people haven't seen either movie but prophecy was more on the line of this movie grizzly but much better because grizzly wasn't that good it was interesting i actually bought that too when I could find it, um, but it wasn't that good. It was interesting. But Prophecy was, again, it was like mainly made up of a grizzly bear, but also some other types of animals where, you know, technically you can't mix DNA. That's what I'm trying to look for. You can't mix the DNA from one animal uh, with another animal, you know, because you can't mix uh, like a dog with a human's DNA. Well, this movie from um, basically um, from a, I'm going to say like um, like a sawmill or something, you know, like a, a a place where you know where they cut the wood, um, something like that, or some type of factory in the woods. Their their toxic waste they just basically dumped it into a lake, and what happened was. These creatures that either died or basically their um, DNA got into this toxicity, um, it created um, this mutated, basically, uh, creature that was not just one species of animal, but a multitude of different species of animal. So it was basically nature's way of fighting back and killing humans for destroying nature itself. And that was, again, this movie back in 1979 called uh, Prophecy, which about the time, I remember seeing they made a big deal out of it, uh, out of the movie. And when, again, it was in, like, the cover of, I think, Time magazine or one of those. So I remember seeing it and was like, yeah, I really want to see this movie. I was a little kid at the time. I think, what, I was born in 67. This was 79, so I was, like, about 12. And I... You know, my parents weren't going to take me. They let me see every other horror movie, but that was one I kind of did not get to go see. Um, it was really good in the way of, you know, I'm not on that whole, well, you know, tree hugger type politic things. But that actually, you know, was an interesting concept for a movie. And I, I had taken it for that. Um, so, you know. And I'm I'm not one for like oh yeah because I I hate political movies, but this particular one was actually definitely um, something. Once in a blue moon, I'll probably pull out and watch again because it was pretty good. 
Um, and it was about a monster. So any monster moves, I like those just as much as, well, technically Jason, um, Michael Myers, they're all monster movies too, but these are like the real monsters, um, but with creatures. So it made it pretty cool. And that was prophecy, by the way. So anyway, I, I went way off track. Um, that was number one, though, was prophecy. And they actually show Jason for Jason Voorhees in one of the Friday 13th. Uh, excuse me. But um, they said Friday 13th, part seven. But I hate, excuse me, I hate to tell you, but they did in uh, Jason X. I know that for a fact. Because again, I know these movies inside and out of Friday the 13th. I've watched them enough times. But number two was I saw this movie a couple times. And it was Maximum Overdrive. And the scene they picked from that for this title i should read the title gangs i want so far off 10 of the most unique horror movie kills uh death by soda machine and maximum maximum overdrive that movie i you know i vaguely remember i did watch it a few times but i forget who did that too i wanted to take a guess and um i'm not gonna even bother it was an all right film uh that was number two. Number three says the um, now it says Chop Ten Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven, the New Blood Sleeping Bag. So they bring that one up again. So um, yeah, I know these movies really well. So okay, and uh, number four was actually the most um, well known one from everybody, which was Death by. Um, xenomorph alien basically the alien come out of the guy's stomach the original alien movie so that one was the most popular next one is 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 death death, death by the thing it's kind of, that's kind of because the, that's the remake of the thing that they're actually showing that part um chest uh defibr defibrillation um And the reason I say that was because the original thing was a classic, the black and white one. The color one was really good, but it was very uh, gory. And yet that one's considered more of a classic than the original one. That's kind of weird. Now, in the original one, um, the creature was more of a plant. I think he was like some type of plant-based creature. And in the movie that... Was that John Carpenter? Because I don't want to get these wrong. I always do. I'm not going to bother looking it up because I I think I did before. I think it is John Carpenter, at least on that one. He made his more. The creature was um, could actually genetically um, it it could turn itself into anyone or anything. That way, it could adapt to any type of environment, which actually is almost like the alien creature because the alien creature would do the same thing, but not to the extent that it would actually be able to camouflage itself into any one anything like uh, cuz in the movie the thing if you if you've seen it that uh, the the thing actually was able to um uh, genetically mutate itself into a dog and into like the rest of the human beings so it was a clever movie um actually I like this one I know this uh, she's a character actress. She's not anybody known. It was Death by Inflation, Leprechaun 3, Loretta's Death is Goofy. Um, yeah, it says, still freaky to watch a woman just inflate until she explodes. I remember watching that one. I've seen her in other movies, too, this actress. She actually, I think, was in the same actress as actually in my other movies I like, which is um, Hatchet. She's like a character actress. She's not like well known for anything besides this playing uh, these unique characters. Uh, plus, it's Caroline Williams, aka Stretch from the Chainsaw Massacre too. I might just watch this for a second because um, it's been a while. But I remember it was like the, uh, the Leprechauns at a casino, and you know she gets mutated. But I remember her. She is the same actress though. She's probably more well-known just for being an extra because, again, I'm watching it now. It was um, Leprechaun 3, and she's got a decent body. She's got a weird-looking face. She wears her hair really short all the time. Um, 
But yeah, Leprechaun 3, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2, which I really don't – I'm not that interested in those movies. So um, I don't remember from there. And I, like I said, she was definitely in um, – what was it? That movie of um, um, Hatchet. She's actually a really good actress. It's just unfortunately she's just known for. I'm watching her explode. I just figured I'd watch it. Um, what do you call it? Um, she's known just to be a character actress. And ironically, I think I can't really say much for Chainsaw Massacre too. But obviously in um, Leprechaun tree three, she explodes and in um she makes it almost all the way through um the hatchet movie she plays in. But she always unfortunately she gets killed though. So she's like I, I don't know if they would consider her a scream queen, but she's definitely um someone who always ends up dying though, at least, to say the least. So I'm just trying to finish out this almost over this sequence. But yeah, if you look, it's called Leprechaun 3 Expansion, um, and she explodes. So yeah, but that that was number six. Um, I won't do... Oh, I forgot about this one. That was actually really funny. It was really dark, but it was funny. Um, And it was Deadly Friend. Um, I can't remember... It says, after Wes Craven's tragic passing, we went through and watched all of his movies. This was on um, Bloody Disgusting, and I actually did like Deadly Friend. It was kind of goofy, though. And it was about this girl. I forget who she was. She ends up dying, or her her stepfather or her father kills her because he's very abusive. But um, this girl who dies, she had this – she was, like, friends with this one boy – who was really like a, a tech geek, and he felt he didn't want to lose her. So this guy was who was a tech geek, also her friend, um, had built this robot, but the robot had some flaws in it. So he took part of the robot's uh, mechanics and, and basically brought his uh, dead friend back to life. And the problem was she also inherited the... Uh, the robots uh, malfunctions and she ends up killing people. And the one scene that they show is where this girl always had a problem with this old bag. Um, I she, this old bag neighbor who's also a character actress. And the deadly friend goes to this old lady's house. She's the one who uh, have you ever heard a movie Throw Mama from the Train? I think it was the actress that the actress who played this old haggard woman who was just real miserable and hated kids. So this deadly friend actually gets a basketball and smashes the woman's head. And it, it looks so fucking bad that it, you couldn't help but laugh because it, it just looks so cheesy. And that was the thing that, like, actually, it was definitely a comedy horror. But people did laugh at that. I laughed at it. And you see this, like, mechanical body after the head gets smashed, running around with no head, and it was really funny. But anyway, it says, after Wes Craven's tragic passing, we went through and watched all the movies and I never seen uh, that I'd never seen before. I saw this in the theaters. Deadly Friend was one of them. It is pretty awful, but is highly entertaining and worth watching for the basketball, de- decapitation, and the nonsensical ending alone. Um, yeah, it is. It is actually. It's if you like really bad cheesy comedy horror movies, this would be definitely one you need to check. I think I downloaded. I might even have bought it because I just liked it. Um, now the next one that was number seven. Number eight is actually Death by Explosion in Scanners. That was a really good movie, by the way. Um, I can't remember that direct. That director is an incredible director too. Because he's done some other really bizarre films. I think is that the one with Deborah Harry? Maybe not, because there was one of the films this director did with Deborah Harry. Um, death by head explosion. Again, it was in scanners. That was number eight. Another classic, unique death. Nowadays, a head explosion will will be done completely in CGI. But you know what? This was done with the old art form, and it looked really good. So scanners uses the practical effects help make it stand out. 
even more today. For the Great Scanner's Head Explosion Homage, uh, home, homage check out the mine, Mind's Eye Review, hashtag one, review, hashtag two, when it gets released after it's complete, completes the festival circuit. But they, show, they see they're just showing clips of these movies, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, this is my favorite scene now. This is the one I might have mentioned in another show with this chick. She's really kind of like cute looking. And um, I should tell you, it's called Debbie's Death. And it's Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. That was the one. Yeah, uh, the Dream Master. That's the one where, if I think it is, it's this girl. She's like really into fitness and her looks. And she had a really hot body because she had on like these leotards and stuff. And uh, Freddy changes her into a cockroach and he, he crushes her. That, that that was like my classic scene. So I might be talking through this just to watch it because I haven't seen it in so many years. It says, one of the most disturbing deaths in Nightmare on Elm Street franchise featuring a girl getting turned into a giant, here, here we go, into a giant cockroach over to uh, only to be crushed by Freddy. This is one of the first clips I ever saw from the Nose film, uh, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, it still haunts me to this day perfectly embodies how unique the franchise can be. Yeah, that is, like I said, that is like one of my favorite scenes, too. I'm not even kidding. So I, I got to take a pause on that one. I'm not going to pause, but, yeah, I'm trying to look. Yeah, she has on like that. It's not like leotards, but it, it's like that, um, what do you call it? It's like that body suit or, or, you know, yeah, like the exercise suit. And, oh, my God, I actually probably, uh, probably jerked off to that back in the day because it was just so hot looking. She had that. Not that she got turned into a cockroach. It's just she had on, like, that workout outfit. And he changes, like I said, he changes her into a cockroach. So, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, he's breaking her arms right now. I mean, it's cheesy kind of almost. But, yeah, she was just, like, hot looking, too. It was that whole 80s look as well. Um, yeah, he breaks her arms, and now I'm, I'm watching it, and I'm just describing it as I'm seeing it, and out of her broken arms come these cockroach arms, because he literally changes her into a cockroach. Um, yeah, she's got, like, those, uh, like, leotard pants on in the body outfit, and she's, like, running now. But, yeah, I, I actually, yeah, I got off, because she, yeah, the whole thing was the girl was, like, so, obs- so into herself and you know thought she was so hot looking and you know was always in love with herself and he changes her into a roach so you know the whole thing about for uh nightmare on the streets also was just a humor um you know the dark humor i guess um especially in this one where she actually lands in the glue of the thing so her face i think comes off she gets stuck in the glue trap of the roach motel um yeah, she becomes like a full roach. Um, but yeah, I at the time I thought it was it was. I mean, I just liked to, in fact the girl wore a leotard. Um, but yeah, it was it was definitely um, watching it now. Yeah, and he's like looking through the roach motel. You know, so there's little paper boxes with the glue trap inside, and just yeah, and she crushes her. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just, I guess you can say, I would call it poetic justice because the girl was basically, she was full of herself and basically um, uh, Freddy Krueger takes that to his advantage. So that was, um, again, that was number nine. I've totally forgot about that one. The next one is Scream, Death by Garbage Door. Oh, garage door. I'm sorry. I should have known how to say that. I got garage bands that I'm using. Let me see if this is working because I had that problem. Nope, it's still working. Okay, but yeah, Death by Garage Door and Scream. Now, I've seen those movies. I'm not very familiar with those, but I did see it. It says, um, Tantum's death is not plausible at all. You can stop a garage door just by grabbing hold of it. But it's certainly never, uh, never been done before. After four films, um, her death is 
arguably the most memorable because it's just creative. So I, you know, I can't believe I can't say her name, but yeah, the one girl gets killed by a garage door and, um, and scream. But again, I don't remember these uh, that well. Those uh, I do like the scream movies. Don't get me wrong. The next one is Death by Marty Dumb. Marty Dumb. Marta Martis is the name of the movie. Martis. I, I think this is like a foreign film. Arguably one of the most disturbing films I've ever made. And Anna's death is a graphic and incredibly dis- is graphically disturbing. Um, they flying is. Flay, oh, the flaying is just a brutal touch. One can hope the remake doesn't tone down the ending, but based on a recent on the recent pho- photographs, it seems likely that they did. Apologies for the Spanish subtitles in the uh, below. It is only full one I could see on the ending. So this guy got this, I guess, probably from YouTube. And the only thing you get was something that had Spanish um, subtitles. Yeah, it's called, I think it's called, it's M-A-R-T-Y-R-S. And it's called Martis, I think. And I'm trying to watch a little bit of I don't think I'm going to watch the whole thing because it does seem pretty grotesque. But it's basically filleting somebody. Like they literally... Uh, cut all the skin off, so all they have is muscle on this person. So uh, I'm going to see if I can just kind of fat. Yeah. I guess it's a woman. You can't tell because all their skin's been removed. I mean, literally, it's just muscle. Um, and you know what? I, I really don't know much about this film. So I, apparently there, it's being remade. Um. So maybe most more people know more about it than I do. But yeah, they flay a yeah, it looks like a girl. You can't tell because all the skin's been removed except her face, but it, again, it looks like a female. Um and she's been filleted. So they said that one. Um but that was number Oh, that was number 11. So, yeah, I don't know if anybody heard of it, but again, it's M-A-R-T-Y-R-S. And the person, the girl was filleted. Wow. And it does look pretty, um, pretty. I'm not going to say impressive. It looks pretty gross. Um, anyway, on my, since I'm on that chain of horror films tonight, because I don't have much else to talk about. And I kind of beat this to death. I think it's just it's just all they put up all the time. Is besthorrormovies.com has another one dated yesterday, October seventh. Uh, first Alien Paradise Lost details surface. Um, it says the cameras will be uh, rolling come March as the second Prometheus film gets moving. So I guess it will be called Prometheus too. But then after that, they're saying that they're going to start production on. The you know the other sequel uh, prequel, but it's just going to be called um, again, Alien Lost Paradise. We've now learned that the flick is more than likely to tie the, directly into the Alien universe, as the picture will be titled Alien Paradise Lost. We fully expect Ridley Scott to pull some shenanigans and tell us we. Uh, tell us we're way off base and that Prometheus and Alien aren't directly connected. Well, if you watch Prometheus, yeah, it was really collect, uh, connected. So since I read so many of these, it's not really worth me reading even an updated story because all they're doing is they're really bleeding it dry. So I'll let that story. But again, it's on besthorrormovies.com, and that was just posted yesterday. Going back to bloodydisgusting.com, it was yesterday. Poltergeist curse focus, uh, uh, focus of the new documentary. Uh, it says because I know a lot of people did die in those films, the, the original Poltergeist series uh, movies. Um, producer and filmmaker Adam Rip wants to get the it's a Rip or Ripe. It's R I double P wants to get to the bottom of the 
suppo- the supposed curse that has plagued the cast of Steven Spielberg's productions, uh, pro- uh, Steven Spielberg's produced Poltergeist film series, um, THR is reporting, uh, maybe it's ripe, is directing the curse of Poltergeist, which is his company, uh, Vega Baby, is financing and producing alongside Indonesia based MD Pictures. He set. He's set to start shooting in November, so that's next month. Um, The documentary will focus on the life and experiences of uh, poltergeist actor Olivia Robbins, who played Robbie uh, Freeland in the first and second installment of the franchise as a way to explore the tragedies that have befallen those involved with the films. Now, if I remember correctly, yeah, a couple of people did die. The, the 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 daughter, the woman, the girl who played the daughter, and then the little girl. No, well, the little girl and the teenage girl. They both died, I think. Um, I think some other people did. We've heard from Bloody Disgusting gave us a brief history of the alleged curse earlier this year. It will be a journey into the unknown attempt to understand the meaning behind the tragedy surrounding the movie, said Robbins, of the curse of the poltergeist. It is something that will hopefully bring closure to a dark chapter in my life. Many of the actors involved in the project have met dreadful ends, explains the site, including Dominique Dune, who was murdered by her ex-boyfriend, a young star Heather O'Rourke, who died at the age of 12 of acute bowel obstruction right before the third film was released. And in 2002, the curse was the focus of an E! True Hollywood story. So it was at least two people. That is kind of weird. Um, On a lighter note, even though it is on a horror website, iHorror, it says Gina Davis wants to star in the Beetlejuice 2 movie. So that's got a lot of hits, 5.5. I love Gina Davis. She was actually married to, um, I don't know if she still is, to Jeff Goldblum. And I like both those actors. So It was officially confirmed earlier this year that Tim Burton will be bringing the ghost with the most back to life in Beetlejuice 2, a direct sequel to the 1988 classic that will see Michael Keaton reprising the beloved role. R- Renata Ryder is also on board as Lydia De- Dietz and another original star hopes to return. And in an interview with E! Online, Gina Davis, who played Barbara uh, Mitlin in, M- Mitlin in uh, Beetlejuice, was asked about her involvement in the upcoming sequel, And though she unfortunately noted that she hasn't yet been asked to return, uh, the good news is that she is totally on board if Tim Burton comes knocking. It might be kind of difficult because um, she's a ghost and she's obviously a lot older. I mean, this is 1988 when that was put out. Now it's like 20 years later almost. Am I correct? Uh, 88 to, well, to say 1990 to 2000, 2010. Yeah, it's like 25 years old. So, and she's a ghost, so she shouldn't age. I mean, you can get away with that with Tim Burton. Because, I mean, Tim Burton with um, I'm drawing a blank with Michael Keaton because you know he he was already in a lot of makeup, so and he was supposed to look like an older person, and he's got a lot of spunk. But how are they going to do that with Gina Davis? I mean, I love her. Don't get me wrong. She's a great woman, but I just don't know how they would be able to pull that off. Um, I'd like to see her. Maybe she could play some, you know. They Now, actually, let me take that back because they did a really good job. I keep on forgetting this um, where they CG'd a younger version in that movie of uh, Tron Legacy um, of um, Jeff Bridges. And he looked really good. Like, they made a young Jeff Bridges and an older one. Um, Let me see. I just want to make sure I got his name right. 
Olivia Wilde was really hot. Yeah, Jeff Bridges, because they had to make a young version that was back from when the, you know, to kind of tie in the the span between the first and second movie. And they did an incredible job. They actually made Jeff Bridges look like he had shaved off like 20 years of his life or whatever it was when that film came out. And it looked incredible. So, yeah, they can do that if they want to, I guess. Anyway, I wish I was in England. A um, little bit depressing, but um, there was something on Doctor Who TV, and they said that um, Doctor Who Festival, the 13th through uh, November 13th through the 15th, it's like, you know, a uh, thing you can go to, but you have to be in England, obviously. Uh, London Excel, and in 21st to the 22nd, of November 2015 in Sydney Moore Park. So Sydney Moore Park would be Australia, right? But, um, yeah, it says book, yeah, it says book UK tickets, book US tickets, or Australia tickets. Yeah, wishful thinking, Walter, US tickets. Now, if they would do that in the US, I would definitely do it, but I'm, yeah, I'm not like I can get up and get a plane um, to England that easily, or I wouldn't have the money. I would love to do it, but it's not going to happen. That's that's where I have to say, you know what? Yeah, I like wasting a lot of money, but this is finally um, – I've gotten too far where I can't afford – I can't afford to do this. So, And I would love to, trust me. I really would. Um, but, again, it's not going to happen. So why even uh, – upset myself about the whole thing so i think that was like that was just an added story oh adam green put up some more stuff i i like him um he added a new thing for halloween you know this time with the guy i i'd love to see him in person i think i missed him or i just didn't even know who he was um he played um he played he's a character actor he played in Adam Green's TV show, he played – actually, I didn't know this. He played Jason Voorhees in the reboot of Friday the 13th. He also played um, in Predators, Sleepy Hollow, Holliston. Um, I guess his name's Derek. He's a great guy. He's like really – seeing him, like I guess interviewed or whatever, he's very down-to-earth. Like he seems like a very down-to-earth man. But, um, yeah, I think I might have seen him. And, yeah, Derek Me- uh, Mears. It might be Derek Mars, and it might be just spelled weird. Because that would make more sense. I think his name is Derek Mars, but it's M-E-A-R-S. But, yeah, there's some inter- uh, some little thing skit he did with him. Um, so, anyway, I guess that's... More than I, I, you know, I don't know what else to talk about tonight. Um, it was very upsetting, and, and uh, you know, I actually got left go from work early. Hopefully, not left go permanently. Um, but it's just gotten to the point now um, that I got to bookmark this later. So, um, folks. I'm sorry. I, I got some stuff I got to work on, and I can't be up all night anyway. I got to. Save my job tomorrow. So, and then Friday, like I said, um, this actually helped because it is Thursday. Uh, maybe Thursday night I'll do a sh- or Friday morning I can do a show before I, you know, do the Philly thing. But I just hope you enjoyed my show. I'm um, hoping this mic, it did pick up a little bit of static. So I'm wondering if there's some surging going on the computer. I wouldn't make sense, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, but, it, folks, you know, I appreciate the people who do listen in. You know, I, I appreciate anybody who wants to support me doing these podcasts, and um, I thank you for that. And I am signing off for now. And, um, hey, if you're out there, I just wanted to give a bit of a concern for a friend because I haven't heard from him in weeks, and I know he's stressing with school. So I'm putting this out there for my friend Matt Tarns. Uh Hopefully – you're okay and uh, healthy and safe and you're not doing anything drastic that, you know, you're getting too overwhelmed like I did tonight or, you know, taking it one step further. So um, other than that, 
I am signing off for now. Everyone, folks, have a good night. Matt, hopefully you're safe. And I will be down in Philly on Friday, hopefully, if everything goes according to plan. So everyone have a wonderful uh, Thursday morning. This is Walter from iWalter. Thanks a lot, folks.